Hi everyone, I'm Deepak. I just completed my PhD at Stanford and I'll be starting as a full-time researcher at Microsoft Research in the fall. I'm excited today to preview the machine learning training papers at OSTI and ATC this year. Deep neural networks have helped generate state-of-the-art results across a broad range of applications, including machine translation, speech-to-text, game playing, and even newer classes of applications such as code autocompletion. However, training modern models is extremely computationally expensive. This is a graph borrowed from the recent GPT-3 paper that shows the number of compute operations needed to train various natural language processing models. The largest GPT-3 model requires about eight petaflop per second years of computation. In this talk, I'll try to provide a broad overview of the papers appearing at this year's OSTI and ATC that try to train high quality models as fast as possible. These papers try to address inefficiencies in the software stack for machine learning training in a variety of different ways. In data centers, expensive accelerators typically are part of a shared resource pool. Schedulers then grant resources to different users based on various macro objectives specified by the cluster operator. Given dedicated resources, users can then use a runtime of frameworks such as PyTorch or TensorFlow in order to execute the training task. For modern deep models, computations are iterative, long running, and extremely compute intensive. The goal of most users is to train the models with as high performance as possible leveraging the awesome potential of modern hardware. Zico, refurbish your training data, and Zero Offload are systems that address inefficiencies in the training process once a job has been allocated resources. Polex, privacy budget scheduling and habitat are systems that try to make it easier to decide how resources should be allocated to various training jobs. In certain cases, machine learning training can also be performed directly on edge devices, such as smartphones or IoT devices. Oort and Octo are systems that try to make this process more efficient. Training a deep neural network model at a high level involves finding weight parameters W that fit a training data set, consisting of inputs and often associated labels. A forward pass through the model generates intermediate activations as well as a prediction. This prediction could be incorrect in some cases. For example, we could think that this picture of a tiger is in fact a lion. Errors between the predictions and the true labels are then backpropagated to the model in a backward pass, generating weight gradients that can then be used to update the model's parameters. Typically, this process occurs for batches of inputs. The backward pass is stateful and uses both the weight parameters and intermediate activations as input in order to compute these weight gradients. Optimization is performed in iterations and each iteration can be parallelized within an accelerator such as a GPU and also across accelerators. There are a number of components in this training pipeline they can become computational bottlenecks. For example, models with a large number of parameters have been shown to increase accuracy on a range of different tasks, for example, in language. With these large models, the activations, gradients, and weights that need to be in accelerator memory in order to execute the backward pass might be too large. Consequently, the relevant state needs to either be partitioned across multiple accelerators using a paradigm called model parallelism or offloaded to memory on the host. Zero offload, which is to appear at ATC this year, shows how state can be offloaded to non-volatile memory on, in the host. And this allows for the training of models with trillions of parameters just using hundreds of GPUs. For certain types of machine learning training workloads, for example, vision, pre-processing, which is usually performed on the CPU as opposed to the accelerator, can take a significant fraction of total time, especially for less computationally intensive models. Examples of pre-processing could be image decoding, cropping, 
adding noise as well as rotating the image. Refurbish your training data reuses pre-processing computation across multiple input samples, thus helping make training less pre-processing bound. As accelerators become more powerful, fully utilizing an accelerator using a single training job becomes more challenging. In such cases, executing model computations concurrently can help improve resource utilization. However, concurrent execution means more intermediate state needs to be maintained in accelerator memory. Memory usage, it turns out, is not uniform throughout training. Memory footprint increases during the forward pass and then decreases during the backward pass. Consequently, synchronizing the forward and backward phases of multiple jobs can lead to memory usage peaking together, which is suboptimal when we want to run jobs concurrently on the same accelerator or GPU. Zico is a system that schedules computation across these concurrent jobs in such a way so as to keep peak memory usage low thus facilitating more efficient usage of these accelerators. Most data center deployments end up using shared resources so that the cost of expensive accelerators can be advertised, amortized over many users. Schedulers arbitrate access to these shared resources and typically hand out resources to different jobs while optimizing some macro objective specified by the cluster operator, such as fairness, cost or make span. Scheduling is an extremely well-studied problem in other computer system contexts as well. For example, big data clusters that execute applications such as Spark make use of cluster schedulers as well. An interesting problem with resource allocation for machine learning training is determining how many accelerators to give to a specific machine learning training job. Machine learning training jobs are inherently elastic in that they can usually make progress with varying numbers of accelerators. However, both statistical and hardware efficiency of a given job are affected both by the batch size being used as well as the number of accelerators. Any scheduler that can give different jobs varying number of accelerators need to take these factors into account. For its reasons about the effect of batch size and number of accelerators on both statistical and hardware efficiency, and is able to consequently reduce average job completion time by as much as 50% relative to other state-of-the-art schedulers by allowing, by adjusting the number of resources granted to different jobs over the course of their duration. Schedulers can allocate resources to different jobs according to other objectives as well. For example, most objectives are functions of either the throughput or the cost of training. For example, fairness. But another important concern when training machine learning models is privacy. Since data leakage occurs every time a machine learning model is trained on a specific training data set. Privacy budget scheduling which is to appear at OSTI this year, tries to explicitly take into account the amount of data leakage that occurs when various machine learning models reuse the same training data set and tries to allocate resources to various jobs while keeping into account this fixed privacy budget across jobs. Resource allocation becomes much harder with heterogeneous resources since different models observe heterogeneous performance behavior on these different types of accelerators. Models are composed of different types of operators. Some can be compute count bound, while others can be memory bound. And thus the optimal implementations of various operators are often also hardware specific. Given performance on an accelerator, Habitat figures out how to extrapolate these runtimes to other accelerator types. These predicted runtimes can then be used to choose which instance type to use in the public cloud for a specific workload, or which accelerator type would be most suitable to purchase for a specific model type. Even though training in the data center is the dominant paradigm used today, 
there are still situations where it is not attractive. Communicating with the cloud can decrease privacy since sensitive data might need to be communicated from edge device to cloud for training. This sensitive data could be compromised either on route to the cloud server or within the cloud server itself. Communicating with the cloud can also increase latency through added communication on the critical path. Additionally, training personalized models in the cloud can quickly become extremely cumbersome. To route around these problems, various solutions have been proposed to train models directly on edge devices. Training on edge devices introduce a host of new challenges. Edge devices typically have limited computational and memory capacity and also might be power limited. Additionally, models might need to be trained collaboratively across many devices to make sure models are not overfit to single users. This is a new paradigm known as federated learning. Octo shows how intake training can be feasible on tiny devices while accounting for the quantization error that comes about from using fixed point processing with extremely low precision. OERT accelerates federated learning by determining what training data can best improve the accuracy of the trained model and which devices can most easily participate in training. To conclude, we see that machine learning training is an emerging workload with incredibly important applications. The machine learning training papers at OSTI and ATC this year address various aspects of this, of this process. For example, Zico refurbish your training data and zero offload, try to improve the performance of training given resources in the data center. Other works like Pollux, privacy, budget scheduling, and habitat try to make it easier to allocate resources to various jobs, while OAT and Octo try to increase the efficiency of training on the edge. Thanks for listening.